I was talking with you and Jill. You said you were expecting to have a target on your back, but the intensity of some of it. Did you see the questions about your past positions from the perspective of race being as relevant as they are? No, and I don't think they're relevant because they're taken out of context. What I didn't see is people who know me. I mean, they know me well. Uh, <laughs> it's not like uh, it's somebody just came out of the blue, didn't know anything, but it's so easy to go back and go back 30, 40, 50 years and take a context and take it completely out of context. And I mean, you know, I, I get all this information about other people's past and what they've done and not done. And, you know, I'm just not going to go there. If we keep doing that, that's, I mean, what we should be debating what we do from here. For example, this whole thing about race and busing. Well, you know, I think if you take a look, our positions aren't any different as we're finding out. Um, with Senator Harris, who yeah. said she sees it as a tool, not a must in all circumstances. Yeah, well, <laughs> look at my record. But and, actually, I don't think busing's about policy, Mr. Vice no, President. No, it's not. I think it was about principle. When you look back at your record on it, you were not in favor of busing. It was a different time. There were different applications. Why not just own it well, and say, way, here's thing, I was Chris. against it, but no, now I've changed. I was, I was in favor of busing that was de jure busing. That is, if a, a court ruled that there was a law passed or circumstance that a, a county, a city, a state did that prevented black folks from being somewhere, then that's wrong. You should bus. I even went so far in the middle of that busing controversy was saying I use helicopters if that was necessary to make the point. And we really got in a town meeting that was got very hot. But what the issue is now is, for example, and it was then, voluntary busing. We supported it. Mm. We supported it then. And by the way, Barack and I, as president and vice president, we provided money for voluntary busing if cities want to do it. I'm not questioning any of that. No, I'm no. saying that when you look back in the 70s, you said, I think busing doesn't work. It's an asinine concept. Well, by the way. You tried to pass bills that weren't for it. Busing did not work. You had overwhelming response from the, the African-American community in my state. My state is the eighth largest black population in the country as a percent of population. They, were, they did not support it. They did not support it. Look. The question is, how do you equalize education in every area? And I put forward the most, the most aggressive plan to do that, and I've been pushing it for a long time. For example, in you know, Title I schools, schools at disadvantage, mm -hmm. we should, I propose we go from $15 billion a year to $45 billion a year. We should bring people in, have preschool from three, four, five years old before kindergarten. We should have, look, every child out there, every child out there is capable but they live in circumstances that make it difficult. For the time they get to school, they've heard three, four million fewer words spoken. They're at a disadvantage. I totally accept all of but, that. But, but, that's number one. But number two, the idea right now, 65 out of 100 jobs in the study I did for the president point out you need something beyond a high school degree. It's true. So what are we doing? We're sitting around here as if it's an, an insoluble problem. I'm, I, I get it on the policy. I never have viewed the busing back and forth in that debate as about policy or application of how to affect civil rights. It's about consistency and proving if you'll be better than what we're dealing with now in the White House, which is people won't tell the truth about things. If busing didn't work, then it made sense that you weren't for it back then. But, it, but why say you were for it? Well, why no, not just be, be straight about it okay, and move on? Because there's three different pieces. I was for voluntary busing, number one. I was for busing where the court showed that, in fact, a legislative body took an action preventing black folks from going to a school. Mm. That is the jure, I know you know, the jure segregation. The difficult piece is, this is 50 years ago, people don't understand the context. The third one is, do you have an administration through their non-elected officials, the Department of Housing, decide every school should be equally balanced across the board? That's a different issue. And the way to deal with that problem is what I did from the time I was a kid. I got, out of I got out of law school, came back, had a great job, became a public defender. I, I, I fought for putting housing in, in uh, uh, low-income housing in, in suburbia. I talked about eliminating redlining. I talked about school districts should be consolidated in ways that made sense. So, in fact... Why didn't you fight it like this in the debate? In 30 seconds? Hey, Come what on, happens man. most in a debate, Mr. Vice President? People blow their time cue. You're the only person I've well, ever seen on a debate stage say, I'm out of time. Well... We never had a place where you have 30 seconds, man. What I didn't want to do is get in that scrum. Do you think the American public looked at that debate, take me out of it, and thought, boy, I really, I really like the way that's being conducted. 
they're really showing themselves to do really well. Come on, man. But they're, they're going to come after you. Sure, they're going to come after you. Were me. you prepared for them to come after you? I was prepared for them to come after me, but I wasn't prepared for the person coming at me the way she came at me. She knew Bo. She knows me. I don't, well, anyway, I, but here's the deal. What I do know, and it's the good and the bad news, the American people think they know me and they know me. Mm. Since that occurred, I had the most sought after endorsement for the mayor of Atlanta, a black woman who's a great leader, Mayor Bottoms, endorsed me. I've had numerous members of the Black Caucus endorse me. You worried about I, the poll slippage with Af African Americans after the debate? No, no. These, these folks just came. My, I'm making the point to you. I don't see it. People know who I am. I don't mm. believe there's anybody out there believes that I have anything other than a keen and, and consistent interest in making sure every child has. These are all our children. Here's a tough. Here's the question: Did you rewatch the debate? No, I didn't. Why not? Well, I didn't have an opportunity to rewatch it. And besides, uh, you know, my measure is how people react outside, getting on a train, getting on a plane, walking through an airport, walking in a parade, uh, just going to the grocery store. I, I, I got no sense. I really mean it. No sense. Here's the tough question for Democrats. They need a warrior, OK? Because not to aggrandize, not to lionize, but this president knows how to fight in the ring one on one. Kamala Harris is friendly fire. Cory Booker is friendly fire. How can Democrats have confidence that you can take on the biggest and the baddest when you're having trouble sparring in party? I don't think I'm having trouble sparring. It's how you want to spar. Look, I'm the guy at the time, everybody talks about things that are changed. I took on same sex marriage. I took on a whole range of issues. I took on arms control. I took on dealing with the Russia with the, with the arms control agreement. I took on uh, Putin in terms of uh, Iraq. I mean, excuse me, in terms of uh, uh, um, what was going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I've taken on these leaders around the world. I'm the guy that's gone in and met them. I've taken on all these leaders. I, I mean, I'm, this is ironic. I've never been accused of being not being able to spar. I've been accused of being too aggressive. But the, but, game, the game has changed. Well, and you think that what's happening with Harris is anything compared to what would happen with you in this? No, president? but everybody knows who this guy is. Come on, man. Come on. How do you beat him? I beat him by just pointing out who I am and who he is and what we're for and what he's against. This guy is a divider in chief. This guy is acting with racist policies. This guy is moving to, to, to just foment hate to split. That's the only way he can be sustain himself. Nothing about him oh. worries you. Oh, yeah, well, sure it worries me in the sense that I'm looking forward to this, man. You walk behind me in a debate. Come here, man. No, you think I, you know me too well. I mean, I, I, the idea that I'd be intimidated by Donald Trump, he's the bully that I knew my whole life. He's the bully that I've always stood up to. He's the bully used to make fun when I was a kid in a stutter and I'd smack them in the mouth. Look, this is not, but that, they, I think the American people want to, a president who has some dignity, who has a value set, who is actually trying to restore the soul of this country. So when they turn on the television, they look up and their kids say, I want to be like that guy or that woman. They're domestic agenda items I want to take through. Sure. But you have made a big point of saying the threat here with the current administration is abroad. Well, what exactly bothers you abroad? What bothers me abroad is, look, the idea that we can go it alone with no alliances for the next 20 or 30 years is a disaster. How are we going to deal with stateless terrorism without doing what I've been able to do with the president, put together coalitions of 50, 60 nations to take it on? I come out of a generation where we were trying to be the policemen of the world. We can't go in every place. We need allies. He is absolutely dissing them. He's embracing thugs. He's embracing Kim Jong-un, who is a thug. He's embracing Putin, who is a who is a flat dictator. He's embracing people who, in fact, and he's stiff arming our friends. He's threatening NATO to pull out of NATO. He, I mean, come on. He says he's gotten NATO to give in more oh, money for their defense because of his tactics. Oh, come on, man. And by the way, the idea that uh, um, NATO think, let me put it this way. If he wins re-election, I promise you, there'll be no NATO in four years. Or five years. You think there'll be no more NATO if no he's reelected? Look, I, I, I went to the, the conference in, that we have. It's called the Verkunda Conference. It used to be the, the first speech stood up. 
the chancellor, the former chancellor of Germany stands up. She says, we have to go it alone. We can't count on the United States. Why did we set up NATO, Chris? So no one nation could abuse the power in the region, in Europe, that would suck us in in a way they did in World War I and World War II. It's being crushed. Look at what's happening with Putin. While he, while Putin is trying to undo our elections, he is undoing elections in, in Europe. Look what's happened in Hungary. Look what's happened in, in Poland. Look what's happened in Moldova. Look what's happening. You think that would have happened on my watch or Barack's watch? You can't answer that, but I promise you it wouldn't have, and it didn't. So with North Korea, the idea of reaching out, President Obama, Vice President Biden wanted to do more than that. The Republicans used to whack you on the head. You can't be nice to people who are enemies. Hasn't this president done what you wanted to do by reaching out to Kim? He did the exact opposite. He gave Kim everything that he wanted, legitimacy. He gave Kim, he ended our relationship as a practical matter with South Korea and Japan as a united front and let China off the hook. He put us in a position where we say, by the way, I love the man. I know what he's doing. He hadn't done a thing. He hadn't done a thing. Kim Jong-un. And what have we done? We've suspended exercises. Look, I come out of the arms control era. Guess what? There's two ways you do this. You work or you defend. You say, hey, man, don't screw with us. You move, this is what's going to happen. This is going to happen. But in the meantime, what you do is you deal with your allies and also those who don't, aren't with you. Do you think China wants any part of North Korea becoming a nuclear power? So what do you do differently with North Korea and China? With, with regard to North Korea, with China, I make it clear that we're going to move our defenses up, as we did before, and we're going to make sure we have a capacity to deal with in the near term. I'm going to let South Korea and Japan know we're there for them. We are their nuclear umbrella. We're there for them. And China, understand, if you don't want us in your throat here, if you don't want us in your face, do something. Do you stop the trade battle with China? Do you go back to TPP? By the way, the idea that this trade battle makes any sense, is benefiting anybody, is absolutely ludicrous. And just ask the farmers here or around the world, that, I mean, around the United States, and the manufacturers, it's killing us. What we should do is we deal with China. I, I had a conversation with Xi before I, Xi, Xi Jinping, before we left. And he said, well, you know, uh, remember, they set up their no-fly zone, and I, see, I said, we're not going to pay attention to it. He said, what do you want me to do, just withdraw it? And I said, no, but just understand, we're just going to fly through. We fly a B-52 through it. We are a Pacific power. We're not going anywhere. Understand, and that's the reason why you have security, is because we've allowed stability in the region. They get it. But what they're doing now is we're not dealing with China's problem for us. China's problem is they're stealing intellectual secrets. Yes. They're cybersecurity. Deal the same way. You say you got to invest here in the United States and you want to be able to invest here. And, we're, and you say we want to invest in China, but you got to have a 51 percent owner. No deal, man. Deal for deal. What this administration's say? fighting that same fight, isn't it? But they're not. No, they're fighting in trade. And Trump thinks it's about trade deficits and trade surpluses. It's not about that. Look, while he's right tweeting, China's going to own the 5G market. While, in fact, he, they're, they're spending billions in artificial intelligence. What are we doing? They're what, doing a whole lot of things that make no sense for us to stand still. What would you do differently with North Korea? Would you slam the door on them again? With North, yeah, I'd make it real clear. Look, you want to talk. You want to deal with us. You want sanctions lifted. Show me something ahead of time. They haven't Show tested me. a big, bad te missile. And, and the reason why they haven't tested is they have it all done. They're sitting there with missiles that are capac have capacity and nuclear capacity right now. So they're not giving up anything.